Good evening. Good evening. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good afternoon. Happy Holy Trinity Thursday slash Sunday worship service this evening. Tonight we're remembering the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What great blessings flow from, from his, the work of Trinity in our lives. We'll begin at number 379. May the Lord bless our worship.
peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 14. 
as the Apostle Paul describes God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, he reminds us of the wonderful blessings we receive from him. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order, that we may also share in his glory. This is God's word. Alleluia, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Alleluia.
Our text for consideration actually comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is God's Word. What kind of legacy do you want to leave for your children and grandchildren? Spiritual. Spiritual. Good. How do you want your children to remember you? I wasn't expecting answers. This is Thursday night. I figured I'd just go with it. <laughs> Loving and thoughtful. Loving. thoughtful, right? Yeah. A good parent. Someone who cared for us, right? Yeah. Took care of us. Loved us. Let me give you two scenarios to see what you think. Dad was such a hard worker, I never saw him, I never really got to know him. Dad and Mom put a roof over our heads, gave us food to eat, and got us where we need to be. Mom was the best soccer mom there was. Dad and Mom were really emotionally distant from us. Didn't really feel like they loved me. I'm guessing that's not what you'd want to hear. Or you want your children or grandchildren to say about you once you're gone. Well, what about this? Dad took the time to teach me valuable lessons in life. And it wasn't always with words, because Dad doesn't like to speak. He led by action. He modeled it for me, just the way he lived his life. And it was natural for me to follow in his footsteps. Mom loved me and cared for me. She bandaged my wounds. She kissed my owie when I was young. She so showed such great kindness to me. Mom and Dad loved going to church, being the Word of God every single day. Do you remember the family Bible? Those big old Bibles that were carried over from Germany. Some of you do, some of you don't. Their big picture Bibles are about that thick, or if not thicker. And they're really impossible to lift because they would sit in the middle of the dining room or living room on display for everyone to see. And those fathers would open up that Bible and they would read a portion of scripture for their children and they'd go through devotion. What are we modeling for our children and our grandchildren? Well, first of all, in order for us to be good role models, our own hearts have to be in the right place. If you're just going through the motions, children, notice. If your heart's not in it, chances are down the road their heart's not going to be in it either. How you treat the Word of God is how they will treat the Word of God. And we have that seen in our society today, right? The reason I bring this up is because Moses was about to enter into the Promised Land. He would, see the Israel, he would not see the Israelites cross into the Promised Land because he'd go to the Promised Land himself, that was heaven. But he wanted to leave his legacy behind that would empower them for the future. And it wasn't necessarily his legacy but God's legacy. And this legacy was filled with love and compassion. On this Trinity Thursday and Sunday, for those who watch it later, as you remember, our triune God fights for us. Let your hearts be filled with love. Now, the Israelite nation was surrounded by uh, these pagan nations that believed in something called polytheism, in other words, they believed in many gods, and these gods were made to, to be like superheroes, superhuman beings just like them, right? Because they're making the gods themselves, they're idols. These gods were war against each other. They were never unified. There was even not even a semblance of unity. Just think about the Greek gods, right? mythology, and that sort of thing. The gods they followed were man-made. They were not real. And just look at what sets our God apart from other gods. As Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is 23, 45. How many Greek gods are there? 
No, the Lord is one. While all other gods of the world were at war with each other, hypothetically speaking, not real, right? Our God is united. And he is the one true God. He is the God of free and faithful grace. You've heard that over the years. He is the God who made a covenant with his people. And he kept that covenant all the way until Jesus came. The God in three persons, united in mission and purpose, to save you, to save me, to save all mankind. Knowing, believing, and trusting in this God is vitally important to us throughout our lives. Listen again to what Moses said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be upon your hearts. These commandments are not meant to be kept in a book on the shelf, but they're meant to be in your heart at all times. Why? Because pagan idols of all kinds are waiting to invade your home and your heart. They invade your phone, your computer screen, your television set, and it's crazy to think how easy it is to invite evil into our lives without even knowing it. With a touch of the keyboard, the click of an email, the opening of an app, evil lurks around every single corner, and it is so permissible today. It is so accessible. It is how bad this world is getting and how we're inundated with sinful thoughts and sinful desires every single day. And sadly, we have made it accessible through our desire to have more. Haven't we at times done this to ourselves, not just as a nation, but as individuals? Never satisfied with the, the oldest iPhone, but you got to have the next latest and greatest tool? These idols look enticing to people. They come in all shapes and sizes. Humanism, spiritualism, new age movements, cults, fame, fortune, and I could go on. Love the Lord your God with as much as you want. Love the Lord your God when it's convenient to you. Love the Lord your God when it fits your narrative and your lifestyle. No, that's not what Moses said. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Moses said these commands are to be on your hearts. He knew they were going to go to the promised land. God was going to bless them abundantly. He could see this. He prophesied this. They were going to be living in the land of milk and honey. Temptation would come. And their hearts would be divided. And our hearts cannot be divided. It's important to push out everything that might get in the way. When we see this command from Moses, the immediate reaction is, that's impossible to love God perfectly. Well, of course. That's why he sent Jesus, to do what we could not do. Jesus loved to keep the commands of God. He left heaven knowing that was what he came to do, to follow every single one of them, to follow the Lord's will, to finish the mission all the way to the cross, his death. And then he himself restated Moses' command and lived it. That's the perfect example for you and for me. The word of God was and is that precious to your Savior Jesus whom you follow, whom you believe in, so do you think you should pick it up and read it? Absolutely. Because it's life. Here you have life. And if it's that precious to him, to my Savior, who bled and died for me, then it's that precious for me too. How often am I so quick to open up my phone in the morning, look what's on Facebook, what's in my Gmail, what's it... Oh yeah, I should have read the Bible. So distracting, right? If you get a chance to read through Psalm 119, I highly encourage you to do so. The psalmist speaks about God's word in such glowing terms. And it's going to take you a few days. Because it's the longest chapter in the Bible, 176 verses. But he reminds us in every single section how important 
the Word of God is to everyday life. And verse 105 is the most popular. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. path. Yeah. God's word lights our way and points us to eternity. But how does one let their hearts be filled with love when there is so much hate in this world? Well, that's where the Holy Spirit steps in. Remember, he is the one who sanctifies you and me. He makes us holy by baptism. He washes us clean the blood of Jesus. He makes us holy in every single way in God's sight. And he inspires you through the word to love the triune God with all your heart because he first loved us. To love with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, your whole being. You hear that word heart. Oftentimes, that's where the seat of the emotions is. And the most pivotal decisions in life are usually made with the heart. Probably not always the best, but we lead with our heart. For instance, when a young person uh, chooses a career path, they usually go with their passions, their heart, their desires, something God has, have, has given them, right? A young man or woman fall in love and they get married, it's generally a heart thing. <laughs> I would hope so. Usually if you're led at the head, it doesn't last that long, but it's usually from the heart. God not only wants your heart, he wants your soul and your strength to be funneled through him. Why? Because he is the one who created you. The one who formed you in your mother's womb. Redeemed you by the blood of his one and only son, Jesus. And he made you holy through the power of the Holy Spirit who gave you faith. Let your hearts be filled with the love of the triune God. He is the one who instills it in you. One thing that has caused this world to fall apart is because the fabric of society is constantly being undermined. And it's been getting worse for the past 50 years or more. You can just see it slowly decline, and now it's <coughs> declining at a rapidly quick pace. <coughs> And the fabric of society is the family. And when the family structure is dissolved, weakened, uh, mistreated, redefined, and utterly destroyed, chances are the moral compass of society goes right along with it. Love is often replaced with coldness. Kindness is exchanged for callousness. Respect is replaced with disobedience. And if we're not careful, we can be led down that same way of thinking. Because the devil is working overtime to fill our hearts with all kinds of terrible desires. Instead of hatred, discord, and disrupted lives, let your hearts be filled with love for the word of God. Just listen again how serious uh, Moses is in verses 7 to 9. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Unfortunately, the Jews uh, misunderstood Moses here. And many took this very literally and still do to this day putting the symbols on their hands, foreheads, and on the door frames, and they made it into a superstitious practice. As if going through the motions of doing these things is going to get you one step closer to God. As if that's what Moses was intending. As if that was the most important thing. And yet you and I know better. <laughs> the point Moses is making here is that he wanted the word of God to be so prevalent in the Israelites' walk of life that they were willing to talk about it with their children and show them by example how important it is. Again, God wants your heart. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul told the Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Remember it. Meditate on it. Let the Word of God take up residence in your heart. There's so many other things that usually are there, like sports 
entertainment, career, even family starts to get a higher ranking than God's Word. And again, if we're not careful, passion for the Word of God might get squeezed out by worldly things. So how can you make sure nothing else is getting in the way? I can't answer that for you. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing for all of you to examine your own hearts, to see the distractions, the temptations, the certain sins that stand in the way of your clear path to salvation. The key is to always keep this in mind, the definition of love, which is God's love for me in Jesus. Not my love for him. It's his love for me. And then my love comes out of that. And again, who do we turn to to answer that question I asked before? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's role is to create, sustain, and cause faith to grow. The answer to that question again, how do we make sure nothing gets in the way? It does not come from you, from you or me. That was my point. It's not for you to try harder, to do your best, or, or do a little more of this and that. It's God himself. He's the one who makes you stronger. That word of God, that precious, life-giving message. Again, takes all the pressure off of knowing that this is something I can't come up with on my own. But instead, he provides the way. He instills in you the desire to love Him and to live your life for Jesus. He alone gives you that love for the Word of God. And it's so vitally important we pass that on to our children and our grandchildren because we want them to be in heaven someday with us. Don't let the message stop with you. Pass it on. Impress it upon the hearts of your children and grandchildren. When your heart is filled with the love for the triune God and the Word of God, it rubs off. Most importantly to your children, grandchildren. Talk about Jesus. Walk with them in life, sharing Christ's love, and impress it upon their hearts by modeling it yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. May that wonderful peace of God, which certainly goes beyond all human understanding, so guard and keep your minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. In a world that is difficult to believe in the one true God, but is so ready to believe that our universe happened by some unknown accident, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. In a society that so quickly rejects what God did through His Son, what do you believe? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. While many put their trust in things or people that they make into their gods, what do you believe that Jesus did that proves He has conquered death and is true God just as He said? He ascended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Those who refuse to trust the Lord are without hope. What do you believe that gives you hope? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Like the rest. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. O Lord our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your world. We bring you our requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil service and support for good and our respect. 
Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Strengthen the family of our country. Give fathers and mothers renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond to our welfare. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue the Holy Spirit, light the body. Thank you. 
Good evening. Good evening. I just got a few announcements I can think of right now. Um, so next Thursday, uh, the Crafty Lutherans are inviting the St. John's uh, people that want to go um, to uh, Hope and Penryn uh, at 10 a.m. So if you're going, you have to leave here about 8.30. Um, um, give me a call or Judy a call. I don't know how the rides are going or... I, <laughs> are you going? I don't even know if I'm going. I haven't decided fully yet, so. Oh. <laughs> but if, if any ladies want to go, we'll, we'll get a ride together to go up there. Um, it was sort of sprung on us for the last minute, but um, they've been coming down here for quite a bit, so if any ladies want to go up there to do this painting project, you're more than welcome. Just let us know, we'll get something together. Um, I forgot to say a prayer tonight. I, I didn't write it down um, well enough, but um, remember, um, Katie Kasparik is leaving next week, leaving us. Um, she's going to Knoxville, Tennessee with her great, her granddaughter and great granddaughter, which is wonderful yes. and great for her, but we're going to sadly miss her. So yes. keep her in your prayers as she travels. She's flying out this next week, and it's, it's her permanent move to Tennessee. So uh, continue to keep her in your prayers, continue to keep her in your prayers as well. Um, the council and I are going to be getting together in the month of June as we get ready to set the budget for um, for this next year. And also we're looking at potentially ordering the new hymnal um, for coming up this fall. The new hymnal has been developed. So those will, discussions will be happening. We'll keep you in the loop uh, as we get ready for our quarterly meeting in July. Um, other sad news is Tree of Life Bible Camp has officially been canceled. Um, there was just too much, um, too much regulations that were still out there and, and people still felt uneasy about having camp. And so we finally as a board decided to, to cancel it. So God willing, we can start up again next year. I'm going to say we're going to start up next year and we're going to get it going bigger and better than ever before. So. I think it's all the answers I have. Yes, sir. Uh, our usher's list is completely empty. I got it. I just forgot. To no, it's it up. It's up. Oh, it, it, you know, there's no signatures. On oh, it. yeah. If anybody <laughs> wants to usher the next few Sundays, so we have the usher's list over there as well. So please sign up for ushering the future Sundays. I gotcha. The other, uh, the other uh, sheets I got to print out too um, for fellowship and um, cleaning. Fellowship and cleaning. Those sign-up sheets will be out there uh, by next Sunday. That's all. Where did that go? I put a. I put a notice from. <laughs> you go. You go. You got. You go. I put a notice from uh, the Senate on our CMO status. Okay. On the board on either side. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for congregational mission offerings. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, in case you didn't know, it's Pastor Hoppy's birthday today. Yeah. So I figured we should probably sing. Okay. So, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Fabi, happy birthday to you. Thank you. 